My name is Ryan Fee for UpswingPoker.com and what I want to talk about in this video are what I think are the top 10 biggest mistakes that I'll see players make pre-flop uh, at Texas Hold'em. So the first thing, the first mistake that I oftentimes see is limping. You should never limp pre-flop uh, in Hold'em because essentially what you're doing is you're giving information about your, you're giving information about your hand and you're not offering yourself a chance to win the pot and it restrict it either limits you from having a raising range meaning if you're gonna limp you might limp everything and uh, you could, you're gonna like miss value you're essentially gonna miss value and allow people to play people behind you to play very profitably by also coming in for limps or only you know sort of raising when they want to have good hands so if they have a good hand they'll raise if they have a weak hand they'll limp uh, and sort of you know don't deny the equity from the blinds by you know limping you let the big blind check and the small blind complete they get great prices to see a cheap flop if you raise all of a sudden, you know, they're going to have, especially versus the hands you're going to be playing, especially from early position, they're going to then have to call those bets uh, with hands that are going to continue and then fold some hands that, you know, would have a chance essentially to see the flop for free and then maybe make something and, and, and have you lose the pot. So the first thing to avoid ever doing pre-flop is limp. Never limp, no matter what you have. The second thing, oh, or sorry, I should, one thing to just preface that is to open limp, meaning you're the first player to enter the pot to limp. If there's some limpers ahead of you and you're in late position, it actually does make sense to limp with some weaker hands that aren't quite good enough to raise, but are also too good to fold. So good examples of these are weaker suited aces, smaller pairs, suited, weak suited connectors, gappers, maybe weak broadways, stuff like that, especially around the cutoff and button area. The second thing is being positionally aware, or rather not being positionally aware. As you get later later position, there's less players to act, you will be playing more and more hands. In other words, from under the gun, you're going to be playing maybe 10 to 15% of hands uh, as an open raise. As, you know, no one else has entered the pot. You're going to raise first in. You're going to look at you know, something like Poker Equilab, and you're going to say, what are the top 12% of hands? I want to raise those. You raise those from under the gun. Whereas once you get around to the button, you're going to be playing 40, 50, 60, maybe even 70% of hands on the button uh, because there's less players left to act. There's less players that can have aces, ace king, pocket nines, whatever it may be that can call or re-raise you or, you know, call or re-raise you and force you to play, you know, against stronger hands and play out of position. So as you, you know, sort of, as you sort of move around the poker table towards the button, you're going to be in position more and against less strong hands so you can play looser. The third thing is playing to passive pre-flop. And this is, you know, one of the, maybe the easiest things to do uh, for a lot of players is just take some strong hands, ace king, ace queen, sort of like jacks plus, and if you would call with them, just turn them into three bets. You can also three bet bluff, it's also a great play, but just simply taking hands that are profitable as calls, but more profitable as three bets and re-raising them pre-flop, you immediately increase the value of your hand, especially with a hand like Ace-King. A hand like Ace-King does not play well multi-way. So by three betting it pre-flop, you make it more likely that if once there is a flop, you're gonna be either heads up or maybe three way to the flop, and that the pot to stack ratio, meaning how many chips you have in your stack versus how much in the middle, uh, is much smaller. That's important because a hand like Ace King or a hand like you know Jacks Plus, Jacks through through Aces, there's one pair of hands do really well with a small pot stack ratio. You know, with <clears throat> if you have like a four or five pot stack ratio and you have top pair, you have an over pair, you can feel very comfortable to bet the flop and get it all, get all the money in uh, because you know it's, it's going to be very difficult, very unlikely that they're going to have a better hand than your top pair or over pair enough for you to not want to put all the money in. Whereas you know if it's raised and you call and there's a 10 to 20 pop stack ratio, you know, a hand like, you know, let's just take, for instance, jacks on a board like five, 10, 5, 4. If, you know, the pop stack ratio is really low, if we three bet pre-pop, we can bet and comfortably put, like, you know, the rest of our money in. We're going to we're gonna be able to stack a 10 or like a hand like pocket 6, pocket 7, something like that. Whereas if it's just a single raise and we call, then all of a sudden putting all the money in on this board can be very sort of dangerous as there's more players left to act. You know, hands like 5-4 suited, maybe there's limpers 10-5 suited. Uh, and, you know, if they only decide to end up ultimately going with the, their two pair pluses or their sets, they can really hurt the effectiveness. You know, essentially you're playing this really big pot where you have really little equity. Uh, so really good to three bet. A lot of hand, a lot of hands pre pop, but if you know if you're not three betting the top hands, that's a good place to start, and then mix in some hands like suited aces or suited connectors. The fourth thing is not calling the big blind enough. The big blind is really interesting in that it's different from every other position at the table. You act last post flop, and you already have a full chip invested. So in terms of a call, you're already getting a better price than anyone else at the table to call, and you're going to act act last post flop. So nobody can three bet you, and you know essentially make you fold your hand, especially as you have a weaker hand. 
What this means is that you play distinctively different in the big blind versus every other position, even the small blind. One of the big problems with the small blind is that by calling the small blind, you offer the big blind opportunity to come in and call or re-raise behind you and essentially hurt your equity because let's say let's just say that the button opened, right? The worst situation one of one of the worst situations to call the small blind, one of the most difficult situations to call the small blind relative to the big blind. If the button opens and then you call on the small blind, the big blind is going to be encouraged to play a lot of hands. Uh, as you know, it's a, it's a button open, it's not a particularly strong open, is getting a pretty good price, uh, and is going to have position on at least one player. And so, you know, there's, there's going to be a big difference in terms of the equity your hand will realize being out of position between uh, versus one player uh, versus two. You know, like I, I suppose that would be the, the sort of problem is if you call in the small man, you're going to be out of position versus everybody. And since there's one player left to act, that player often come along, uh, it'll make it the, such that you you're sort of going to realize less less equity because there's going to be more players that are going to have a decision or you know could make a hand or put you in a tough spot as you're going to have to be acting first and giving them more information about their hand um so so yeah like you know sort of for that reason if there's somebody is calling a lot in the small line you can call out in the big line you can put them in a tough spot um and, and yeah and have it function just very differently from every other spot at the table just due to really the structure of the game the, uh, the fifth thing is raising too wide or not enough on the button. I think I see both of these things happen. Uh, you know, I think, like I was saying, I think anywhere between 40 and 70% of, of hands on the button is, is the way to go depending upon the games you're playing. If you're playing in tougher, more aggressive online games where you face a lot of three betting, sticking to around a 40 to 50% range is probably smart. But if you play in a live game where you almost never get three bet from the blinds, it's crazy to me, you definitely wanna be opening up all the way to probably 70%, maybe even a little bit wider, Definitely including all suited hands, a lot of connectors, a lot of ace X, a lot of king X, or all your ace X, most of your king X, uh, because you know one of the biggest challenges for, for raising is getting a three bet, because you never see that, or you rarely see that, especially in a live setting, by, uh, by raising really wide, you, you're, sort of, you're sort of exploiting them, or rather they're not exploiting you. The sixth thing is not playing loose enough in the small blind, or rather not three betting enough in the small blind. This goes back to what we were saying about the, the big blind being able to come along what you should be doing in the small blind is three betting as much of your range as possible. And you know, again, the reason is because by three betting, you make it such that you, first of all, there's a lot of hands you're going to three bet in the small blind by default. You're going to three bet a lot of strong hands, uh, and, and thus it, it gives a very sort of you know a small blind flat range because to be so much higher than the big blind is is, is really straightforward. You, you know, it's you can oftentimes be taken advantage of because uh, you know you're, you're often playing either a middle pair or sort of a Broadway of some kind. And uh, since your range doesn't have much more than that, it's easy for your opponents to realize a lot of equity. So by three betting the whole range, you make it A, a little bit more difficult for your opponents to realize equity, and B, you make it far more difficult for the big blind to come in and not having nearly as good of a price uh, on an overcall because now they have to call the three bet. And they also don't, uh, uh, you know, like four betting isn't, isn't as appealing because, isn't as appealing as three bet squeezing because, you know, now all of a sudden they can run into all the top hands in your range. Uh, so three betting, you know, three betting more hands than the, specifically the small blind. Again, if you're going to you know, sort of look at what are the two places to three bet more, probably, like if I was going to guess like a random person, I would say the small blind number one, the button number two, and the big blind number three. Number seven, playing too loose, calling from the button. Or sorry, not playing loose enough, calling from the button. Uh, the button has a ton of value. There's a ton of value in calling on the button because you're going to be in position post slot versus everybody no matter what. Again, like the big blind, it's distinctively different from every other position. While there are blinds that can three bet you off of your hand, that's okay because again, especially in live settings, it's not gonna happen a ton, and they still have to worry about the pre-flop raiser who can still have all the really strong hands, and you're gonna have, you're not gonna have the super strong hands, but you're gonna have some medium, sort of medium high strength hands that could call off three bet. So it's, it's not the most attractive thing to three bet a lot of hands as a squeeze from this position versus good players. Um, you know, even if they sort of knew better, and, and I would say that most people don't. So you can, again, call a lot of hands there and realize a lot of equity because, again, you're going to have position, and just having position in poker, especially deeper in these called pots, is inherently valuable and adds value to your hand. So you can, you know, be calling with weaker offsuit broadways, suited connectors, and, uh, and smaller pairs. Number eight. Not okay. Not playing loose enough from the small blind when it folds to you. We should have reversed these, but what are you gonna do? Number eight. Uh, so, what a lot of people won't realize is that, especially, especially again, we're harping on live, but I know a lot of you guys play live. In a live setting, most players don't play anywhere near loose enough preflop because they're so used to full ring. They sort of play these 
range of hands between 10 and 30%. They rarely stray outside those 10, 30% of range of hands, especially versus a raise. Why this is important is because if you're gonna be three or even four Xing in the small blind live and your opponent's only playing 30 or 40% of hands, they're just simply gonna be folding too much. You could, if you're, listen, if your opponent, if you're four Xing and your opponent folds 70% of the time, even if they three bet the rest of it, no, actually, if they three bet the rest of it, it'll go badly for you, but I know they won't do that. They'll three bet at most 12% or something like that. Um, but even if uh, they play, you know, if they play only 70% of hands pre-flop, uh, and you're, you're four axing, you're going to be printing money because they're just going to be folding hands that have the equity to call, and your hands aren't going to have to realize that much equity. You're going to be able to play like weak offsuit connectors, weak suited hands, weak offsuit, you know, jack six off type hands are going to do really well because they're not going to have a ton of equity, but you're going to make most of those chips or your sort of theoretical expected value chips. They're getting them off of their hand pre-flop. So yeah, I would say in general. If you, however loose you're playing in the small buy right now when it comes to open raising, just jack it up another 10, 20, 30 uh, percent. Number nine, overvaluing offsuit hands. This is a this is something that I think is particularly it's particularly worrisome or troublesome in when you are in middle position and you're facing early position raises. It's much better, much much better to have a hand like nine eight suited than it is to have a hand like queen jack offsuit from I mean almost anywhere, but like specifically. When you're in middle position versus, uh, you know, versus an early position raise, because a lot of their, well, first of all, I'll, 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 they're always going to have every better hand and then never have any worse. Uh, so there's, I hesitate to use the word reverse implied odds, but there's not a tremendous, there's not the the value you're looking for in terms of making, you know, sort of top or middle pair. You'll often be beat. And uh, the other thing is that the, you know, these, that's what offsuit broadways are really good at. They're really good at flopping like a strong to medium strength strong sort of top pair. Uh, whereas a suited connector like 98 suited is really good at making, you know, sort of like middle pairs or straight draws or gut shots or flushes or flush draws, stuff like that, that have a lot of value, especially versus sort of tighter ranges. So even though if you took a poker equity program and were to put in queen jack versus the top 15% of hands and 98 versus the top 15% of hands, you would see that queen jack actually has higher raw equity in the realized equity pots. In other words, when, you know, there's a flop and you, there's sort of, you know, post flop play and whatnot. What you'll find is that 98 actually has more equity. So in general, I would try to be conservative with my weaker offsuit broadways, anything worse than, you know, sort of ace, jack, king, queen. Uh, when it comes to these early position raises and be more comfortable playing pseudo connectors or middle pairs. And number 10, and this one's again, specifically for the live guys, but calling massive three bets. Oftentimes what you'll see live is people open to 4x and then you'll face a 3 bet to 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20x. 20x the size of your raise. Uh, the way to combat big bet sizes is to just play really tight and then continue, especially as you know, raise a 4 bet yourself with your really strong hands. There are definitely spots live where it's going to be hard to continue with anything other than something like 9s plus, ace queen off, king jack suited, or king queen suited, ace jack suited. Something like that, like a very tight range. Uh, I ought, like one of the things you can just really crush live players in is the guys that you know won't hold a three bet or never hold a three bet, especially when they're out of position. You can just three bet them a lot, three bet them really big, especially if they'll never four bet you. Uh, you'll play these really big pots in position, and you'll win a lot of trips, you win a lot of money doing that. So, you know, and, and so like in other words, you, you can almost use this against them. But the way to play against these really big four bets is to, or rather three bets, is to four bet often. And, and to really just play really tight, they're risking, you know, if you're gonna, if somebody's gonna three bet to 15X off a of, of 4X raise, they're risking about three times the size of the pot with players left to act, presume, you know, presumably if it's sort of middle early, middle early position, uh, they're risking, risking three X time, the time the size of the pot uh, to win your open raise. So there's not, a, you're not particularly compelled to call a lot of the time uh, because their, you know, sort of bluffs or their weaker hands will perform quite badly. Uh, anyway. So that's the, that's the Ryan Fee Upswing Poker Top 10 Pre-Flop Tips. I hope this helped. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the bottom of this video. And I will hopefully see you guys in a new video real soon.